All right, we're going to find the inverse of functions using the switch and solve method. To use the switch and solve method, the first thing we do is we change f of x to y. Second, we interchange x and y. Third, we solve for y. And then fourth, we change y to f inverse x. Now, in order to find the inverse of a function, the function has to be one to one. And in all of these examples, the, uh, the functions are going to be one-to-one. -one. Uh, and also remember that with uh, a function and its inverse, the, do the domain of the function is the range of the inverse function, and the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. Okay? So let's start working some examples. We've got f of x equals 2x plus 5. So the first thing we do is we're going to change f of x to y. So we have y equals 2x plus 5. Second, we interchange the x and y. So we have x equals 2y plus 5. And then third, we solve for y. So I subtract 5 to both sides. So I get x minus 5 equals 2y. And then I divide both sides by 2. So I get x minus 5 over 2 equals y. Then I have to change, or the fourth thing, I change y to f inverse x. So when I change the y to f inverse x, I'm just going to go ahead and write the f inverse x over here on the left hand side, and that equals x minus 5 over 2. And there's my answer. Let's look at the next example. I have f of x equals the square root of 3x minus 1. All right. So I'm going to change f of x to y. So that gives me y equals the square root of 3x minus 1. Then I'm going to interchange x and y. So I get x equals the square root of 3y minus 1 and then I solve for y. So to solve for y I'm going to have to square both sides to get rid of the square root so I get x squared equals the square root of 3y minus 1 squared. So that gives me x squared equals 3y minus 1. Then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I get x squared equals 3y. Oh, I'm sorry. Get x squared plus 1 equals 3y. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I get I get x squared plus 1 over 3 equals y. And then I change y to f inverse x. So I get f inverse x equals x squared plus 1 over 3. Now, remember I talked about the domain of the function has to be the range of the inverse function. Well, what's the domain of this function? Well, we know with the square root we can't take the, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So 3x minus 1, this part, this 3x minus 1 
it cannot be negative. It can be zero or positive. So that means that 3x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to zero. It has to be positive or it can equal zero. Okay. So if we solve this for x, we get 3x is greater than or equal to 1. x is greater than or equal to 1 third. So the domain is x greater than or equal to 1 third. So that has to be the range of the inverse function. So what values can we plug in for x so that we get, get values of 1 third or greater? Well, that's when x is greater than or equal to 0. Because see, if we replace x with 0, see 0 squared plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1 third. And then if we plug in 1, we would get 1 squared plus 1 over 3 equals 2 thirds, and so on. So you can see this is the values of x greater than or equal to 0 is going to produce values of 1 third or greater. So in our answer, f inverse of x equals x squared plus 1 over 3 for x greater than or equal to 0. Alright, let's look at this next one. So this function here, it's 1 to 1. So we change f of x to y. So we have y equals 2x minus 1 over x minus 6. We interchange the x and y, so we get x equals 2y minus 1 over y minus 6. And then we solve for y. So let's look at this x as being over 1. And when we solve it, we can cross multiply. So I get x times y minus 6 equals 1 times 2y minus 1. So that's 2y minus 1. And then I solve for y. So I'm going to use the distributive property here and clear the parentheses. So I get xy minus 6x equals 2y minus 1. And so to get all the y's on one side, and everything else on the other. See, everything with a Y needs to go to one side, and everything that doesn't have a Y has to go to the other side. So I'll subtract 2Y to this side, and 2Y to this side. That'll get rid of the 2Y over here. And then add 6X. That'll get rid of the 6X. So I have to add 6X to the right-hand side. So that's going to give me XY minus 2Y so x, y minus 2y equals, and see the 2y goes out over here, so I'm left with 6x minus 1. So that equals 6x minus 1. Now you can see that I have a common factor of y, so I'm going to factor that out. So that's going to give me y times x minus 2 equals 6x minus 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 2. So that gives me y equals 6x minus 1 over x minus 2. And then I change the y to f inverse. So I get f inverse x equals 6x minus 1 over x minus 2. And there's my answer. Alright, let's look at this last example. 
I've got f of x equals x minus 3 squared for x greater than or equal to 3. Now this part here that says for x greater than or equal to 3, we have that there to make this a one-to-one -one function. Okay, what we've done is we've said, okay, f of x is equal to x minus 3 squared, and the domain is x greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so keep in mind, since the domain of this function is x greater than or equal to 3, that means when we find our inverse function, the range has to be greater than or equal to 3. So let's change f of x to y. So y equals x minus 3 squared. Then we interchange x and y. So x equals y minus 3 squared. Then we're going to use the even root property. If you remember the even root property. So that gives us y minus 3 equals, and then this is going to be plus or minus the square root of x. Then we're going to add 3 to both sides. So I get I get 3 plus or minus the square root of x equals y. So I get y equals 3 plus the square root of x or y equals 3 minus the square root of x. So I change y to f inverse. So I get f inverse x equals 3 plus the square root of x or f inverse equals 3 minus the square root of x. Now, remember the domain of the function is x greater than or equal to 3. So which one of these is going to give me values greater than or equal to 3? Well, if I start plugging numbers in for x, see if I plug 0 in for x, I get 3 plus 0 is 0 plug 1 in, I get 3 plus 1 is 4. See, this is going to give me values greater than or equal to 3. This one isn't, because if I plug 1 in for x here, I get 3 minus 1, which is 2. And see, 2 is not greater than or equal to 3. So this is not my solution. My solution is f inverse of x equals 3 plus the square root of x. And that's all for this video.